today we have Christina Phillips. She's an MVP. She's one of our favorite presenters. And this is fun. Payment terms on leash. And so I am going to get ready to hand over the rights so that we can see GP because we got 10 minutes to learn a great tip about GP 2015. Christina, I can see your um, your uh, web or your uh, your gosh monitor. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, it's Thursday. One more day till the weekend. My daughter asks me every morning, "How many more days till the weekend?" And then so this morning I said, "Well, technically two days, but really we're just going to say one." Um, Anyway, my name is Christina Phillips. I'm a senior manager with BKD. I'm based out of Kansas City. I'm actually sitting in my house right now, though, because um, it is the Big 12 basketball tournament downtown. So um, we got the option to work from home to avoid the ridiculous amount of traffic because of all the rabid basketball fans. So I'm greeting you from actually Lee Summit, Missouri. And I'm here to talk to you about something that is kind of simple. Um, I remember going to Convergence probably ten years ago and sitting in on a Microsoft session that was about, it was a round table thing around how they choose what enhancements go into the software. And it was right around the time, it probably wasn't ten years ago, it was probably less, but um, it was right around the time that they were really embracing Microsoft Connect as a way to vote on product suggestions and really driving everybody there to kind of determine what goes into a product. And one of the comments that really stuck with me is that some of the most like no-brainer kind of enhancements don't get a lot of votes because people don't seek them out and they don't vote for them. And I kind of feel like this payment terms enhanced it probably falls in that category, that it took a lot longer for it to get into the product than, um, than it really should have because there's probably a lot of people that are going to benefit from it. So I'm sitting here on the administration page and I've uh, maximized my setup section and I'm going to go under company and I'm going to go to payment terms. Now, hopefully the first thing you notice when this window pops up is the window is bigger. <laughs> okay. You also should probably notice at the very top that there's a calculate button. Hmm. We're going to talk about what that is. Now, first we're going to talk about this window just in terms of it being kind of a two-part window. Okay. So the top part of the window deals with your due date. Okay. And you can notice that you can calculate the due date based on the transaction date, which is probably the most common, or based on the discount date. Okay, now discount date is optional. It's the second part of the window. But it is a date that can be calculated much like the due date. Then you'll notice the due method is what I'm going to say. Okay, I'm going to call it kind of the how it calculates when it's due. Okay, and so... The most common typically is net days, okay? So 30 net days, 60, 45. That's probably the one of the more common methods for calculating a payment term. But you'll notice that there are several others. There's date, okay? This is when I say it's always due on the 15th of the month. There's end of month. There is no due date. Next month, okay? And then we get into some new methods as well, due in a set number of months, due on a set month and day, or due annually. Okay, so all some interesting methods here, right? And new methods in the system. Now we're going to go back to the net day method. So I'm put my 30. And you'll notice down below with discount date, we have again the days, date, end of month, and none, which everybody is used to. But we have those four additional methods. We have the next month method, so due on the 15th of the next month. We have a number of months method, a month and day method, or the annual method. Now, when calculating a discount date, right, which is optional, you can put that in here and you can stipulate the discount type, whether it's going to be percent or amount. And if it's a percentage-based discount, what is that percentage calculated on? Okay, is it calculated on the sale and purchase? Or sale and purchase less discount plus freight plus miscellaneous plus tax? Okay, and keep in mind the discount that it's referencing there would be the trade discount on the invoice. Now you also notice a box at the bottom of the screen. This is only available if you're choosing a date or end of month payment term. 
the date or end of month payment terms means it's due on a set date or it's due at the end of the month. Grace periods and enabling those protect you against situations where, for example, you have an invoice that's been issued on the 28th of March with an end of month payment term. That would make it due on March 30th. Does March have 30 days? I'm so bad about the number of days in a month. Um, but obviously that's probably not fair. So a grace period says if the document date falls within whatever the grace period is, let's say five days, within five days of the end of the month or the five day, within five days of the due date with a date-based payment term, it's going to actually bump the due date out automatically to the following month. Okay, so that invoice that was issued on 328 would actually be due at the end of April in that case. Now this works in tandem with the grace periods that you stipulate on the customer or the vendor card. And again, this option is only available when you have a date or end of month payment term. Now, so I mentioned the methods, right? The due methods of next month, 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 day, and annual. So let's talk about this calculate button. So the calculate button gives you the option if you don't minimize all your software. The Calculate button gives you the option of seeing the payment term calculate without actually having to put in a transaction. So I can come in here, I can put in a date, and the system will then calculate based on the due date, based on the discount, when it's going to be due, and when the discount would be due, and what the discount amount. Okay? And note that it says it won't take into effect customer or vendor grace periods, because those are de determined by the individual customer or vendor. The thing that I really like about the Calculate feature is that oftentimes when people are setting up more complicated payment terms, it's really hard to visualize or envision how it is going to calculate. And particularly with the new methods, you can now pick and use one of those new methods, come in and run through a few examples in the Calculate window, and ensure your payment terms are calculating correctly. Now with that, I'm at about eight minutes, so I have two minutes to take any questions if anyone has any questions about the new payment terms functionality in GP 2015. And I think if you guys have questions, yeah, there we go. Kim, are you seeing anything pop in? Kim, are you there? I'm sorry, could you not hear me? Um, I could not hear no you. <laughs> uh, no questions in the queue. So it's, again, on the right-hand side, if you've got any questions. Anything else? Oh, here we go. Um, here's one, and it says, um, does this affect receivables aging? No, it should not. I mean, at the end of the day, all that the payment term really does is calculate what the due date is. Once that due date's been calculated, it gets saved on the transaction, and that's what gets utilized if you're aging by due date. Um, the thing that I should mention is that it works that way because if you recall in your transaction entry windows, you can override the due date that's calculated. Um, I try to discourage people from doing that because I kind of feel like it's a crutch to uh, avoid having to set up payment terms correctly. If you can set the payment term up to calculate the way it needs to be, it'll save you from having to override that value. But at the end of the day, the aging will only be impacted by the actual due dates that are calculated on the document. Fiat adds here, um, he says thank you, and he said he's just getting to discover here at GP 2015. So payment terms may need a review after the migration. Yes, and I think that this is a good point. That like this is one of those pieces of functionality that if you don't go looking for it, you could easily continue and never even realize it's there. Because you think about how often do you really set up a new payment term. But if you're kind of hobbled a little bit, like if you're overriding payment terms, if you're not using them because they didn't really work the way you needed them to, um, definitely an opportunity to revisit them with uh, 2015. Excellent. No other questions in the queue. Cool. 
All right. Any last words of advice before we let folks go? No, as always, don't go changing a bunch of stuff in your live company. I'll leave you with that. Test it on the test company. Run through some of the examples using the calculate function, and good luck.